What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. In one of my previous videos for YOLO v4 Deep Sort, a bunch of you were commenting, how do I run this in collab? How do I run this in collab? You ask and you shall receive. So for this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to run an object tracker in the cloud using Google Collab. It's totally free. I'm going to be showing you guys how to enable GPU within your notebook so that you can run it in super fast processing speeds. And we're going to be using DeepSort, a state of the art object tracking system that will be built off the backbone of our YOLO v4 object detector. I'm going to be showing you guys how to get the object detector. So don't worry about that. And then we're going to be able to run it extremely fast all within Google Collab with under 10 clicks of a button. You heard that right. It's going to take less than 10 minutes to get your own object tracker fully set up and operational within Google Collab. And it's going to be doing crazy object tracking. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do hit that like button, it means a lot. Let's hop right into it. Alrighty then. So there's going to be two ways you can open the Collab Notebook in order to run your deep sort object tracker with YOLO v4 detections. The first is going to be a link to the notebook in the description. You can go ahead and just click the link. The second is to go over to my um, GitHub repository, the AI guys code, YOLO v4 deep sort. And I've added a little button down here right in the readme. We can just open it in Collab. Either one will bring you to this next page. So it's going to go ahead and open up Google Collab. And what you're going to want to do in order to run the notebook as yourself and not my, my notebook, you're going to want to go ahead and click this copy to drive button. If the copy to drive button is not here, there's going to be an open in playground. Um, either of those two buttons will get the job done. So you're just going to go ahead and click on the copy to drive button. And it's going to go ahead and open up your very own version of the notebook. So once you've gotten the notebook copied over, you're just going to go ahead and first things first, we're going to want to enable the GPU within our notebook in order to run the object tracker um, almost 100 times faster than if we were going to run it on um, just straight CPU. So how to do this is you can either follow the steps. There's pictures in here. But it's just go to Edit, Notebook Settings, and then you're going to change this. It'll be on None by default. You're going to go ahead and change it over to GPU, and then just hit Save. And now the GPU, GPU is enabled within your Collab Notebook so that you're going to be able to run the rest of the tutorial with your GPU enabled. So once you've gotten that done, you're going to go and scroll down. The next step is just cloning over my GitHub repository into the VM, into the notebook. So you're just going to go ahead and run the cell. And that's just going to quickly clone over my code so that you can access it within the notebook. So once that's done, you're just going to go ahead and run the next cell just to step into the repository. So we're just going to go ahead and run that. So now we are actually in the folder where the code is so that we can now run the next. The third step is install dependencies. By default, you should already have all of the actual dependencies already pre-installed on your Google Collab workstation. Um, so they should already come downloaded onto your Collab notebook. If for some reason you are getting errors in the preceding steps, um, all you're going to want to do is come here, uncomment this line, and then run this cell. Because depending on what region of the world you're in, the Collab Notebooks might come with different um, dependencies pre-installed. Um, so you might have an issue. Um, but I don't think you should. And if there is, you're just going to go ahead and run this cell. But we don't need to, because of the region I'm in, North America, it has all the dependencies already downloaded. The next step is we're going to go ahead and get the YOLO v4 pre-trained weights. So our object detector is going to be running with the YOLO v4 pre-trained model that's um, trained on over 80 classes. So it can detect over 80 types of objects. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple examples on people, on cars. Um, and I'll show you how to filter that later on in the video. So if you only want to detect one or two of the classes, or however many you want, I'll show you guys how to filter the pre-trained uh, model to only show and only track the classes you want. So that's pretty cool. So we're just going to go ahead and run this. And it's going to download the pre-trained weights um, of the model, of the object detection model, into our Collab Notebook so that we can access it. There we go. 
Now our fifth step is to convert the YOLO v4 dark net weights into a TensorFlow model, because our deep sort tracking is going to be running off of a TensorFlow model. So we're going to convert the YOLO v4 pre-trained weights from their dark net style that they come pre-trained on over into a TensorFlow model. So once again, you're just going to run this cell. And this cell could take a minute or two, as it is a pretty large model file that we're converting over. So just bear with it, and it'll take a minute or two. So once it's done converting the model into a TensorFlow model, it should look like this. You'll just see the total params. Um, and then that's going to give you the signal that it's successfully converted the model over into a TensorFlow. And then we can go to running the deep sort with YOLO v4. So it's that easy. It's just a couple cells to enable you to get set up and ready to run the object tracking in your own collab notebook. It's crazy how you can run this in a sequence of five cells or so and then have a fully functioning object tracker. Um, so I'm going to show you guys just how it runs by default. By default, it's going to run on all eight, track all 80 of the classes that are found in the pre-trained model. Um, so I'm going to show you that, and then I'll show you how to filter it for specific classes of your choice. So we're just going to go ahead and run this line right here. And what it does is it's grabbing a test video inside of this repository, my repository that you've downloaded, test.mp4 of a bunch of people walking on a busy street. And then it's going to go ahead and output the video, save it showing the objects being tracked to tracker.avi. You can specify wherever you want it to be saved. But if we go into the files, YOLO v4 deep sort, it's just by default, this command will save it right here into this output tracker.avi. So you can see it's currently writing to the file. And where you're going to access the video is in data, the data folder, video. These are two test videos that you have. Um, but you can easily just go here, this button right here. And this button right here will allow you to upload any video of your choice to uh, practice your object tracker on. So if you want to try on your own video that you have, a really cool video, you're just going to go ahead and upload it here. And then if you want to download the video afterwards, you can just go right here and download the saved video. So you'll see that it's running, and it's getting trackers. It's going to output to the screen the FPS, the frame number, along with some information on each of the objects being tracked. So you can see we're tracking people and bicycles. Um, those are two of the 80 classes that are found within the frame. Um, one unfortunate event or series of events that cannot happen in Google Collab is unfortunately Google Collab does not do well with outputting live video um, while it's being processed. So we, unfortunately, we cannot output the objects being tracked as the video is being processed. We have to process the entire video, save it to that tracker.avi file that you see right here, and then it's going to go ahead and we're just going to open that video within Collab, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, and by default, all of this detections, all of the extra info being printed to the console about the objects being tracked um, is not defaulted. So what allows us to run this in, get this output, is this dash dash info flag. If you want it to run a little bit faster um, but don't, and don't want the detections or trackers to be tracked um, in the output, then you can just remove this flag. And this don't show flag is what allows the video that's being processed not to be outputted and cause it to fail within the collab notebook. So that don't show flag is the key here. It suppresses the video from outputting as it's being processed so that it does not fail. So if we scroll on down, we're going to just go ahead and run this cell right here to run this helper function that is going to go and actually show us the video after it's, being after it's been run within our collab notebook. So that's what allows us to do it. So now we're going to go ahead and actually convert the saved.avi file into an mp4 file. So that's kind of what happens. And if we go down here, we can see it's being saved to the outputs, calling it output.mp4 with a width of 960. So you can specify the width right here if you want it to be bigger or smaller. And then if we go ahead, we can run it here and see our objects being tracked. So you can see that it's tracking all of the people as well as the bicycles. And those are the classes in the image that are within the 80 trained classes. And now I'm going to show you, if we scroll on down, this demo video was only 10 seconds, so that's why it's so short. Um, but you can upload a longer video if you want. 
And you can see it does a really great job of tracking the people as they cross one side of the street to the other side of the street. So it's pretty cool how fast you can get Deep Sort and YOLO v4 um, working together within Collab with just a couple quick clicks of the button. Um, you can have your own object tracker running. So now I'm going to show you guys how to filter out unwanted classes. So what you're going to do is you can either follow along with the images within the Collab Notebook. If you click this link right here, Coco Classes, it'll show you a website that shows you the 80 classes that the model is trained on. So if you're wondering, what can I track with this pre-trained model, go to that link and have a scroll through and play around with whatever classes you want your object tracker to track. Um, but I'll show you right here. So you step into YOLO v4 deep sort, and then it, you double click on object tracker.py. You double click, it's going to open it up, the code file, just expand it a bit. And then you're going to want to scroll down to about line 160. Line 160 is where the action takes place. So if we scroll on down to line 160, we have this line right here, allowed classes. So by default, this reads in all 80 of the classes. But if you want to filter certain classes, all you have to do is comment out this line and uncomment the line on 163. So if we were to do it just like this, it would only allow persons or people to be getting tracked. So if you want an object tracker purely for people, um, this is the way to go. The other demo video I have has cars in it. So I'm just going to change this to car so that we can purely track cars within the image or within the video, sorry. And now we just go ahead and exit that. And I scroll on down. And now I can run it again here. And this is now running on the cars.mp4 video that you also have from the repository. And it's saving it in the outputs folder as custom.avi. So this one's being saved as custom.avi. And the previous one was tracker.avi. So just some naming conventions. And as it runs here, it's going to go ahead. And I've hidden that info flag. So it's not going to show you the actual um, objects being tracked detailed info on the screen. It's just doing the frames and FPS. And as you can see, we're averaging around 18 frames per second, which for deep sort is extremely fast and um, probably the fastest object tracker you're going to be able to get. So I recommend deep sort uh, if you're trying to figure out which one to use. And YOLO v4 is a great object detection that works hand in hand with deep sort. So we've gone ahead and run this. It's finished running. And now we're just going to do this exact same command Again, that uses our helper function to convert the .avi file into an mp4. And this time, we're going to save it as result.mp4 so that we don't overwrite our other um, video of the people on the busy street. So it's just processing in the video. And then you'll see that we'll have a nice object tracking video with deep sort and YOLO v4 on a bunch of cars driving on a road. And you'll see how accurate it is um, when we filter out other classes. So when it's finished processing and loading in the video, you'll see we have this video of cars. And if we run the deep sort video, we can see that deep sort and YOLO v4 are working hand in hand in order to track these cars as they drive down the busy street. And you can see that up top there, car 13, we had lost it for a couple seconds there if we rewind. But that because of deep sort, it actually keeps the ID the same. And it's remembered that this object right here, this car in particular, is car 13. So that's how deep sort works with deep association metric. Um, overall, it's an extremely complex system, but it seems very simple and easy to run <laughs> when we do it like this. So that's really it for this tutorial. Uh, it's a super short one and super easy one for anyone to be able to run deep sort with YOLO v4, enabling GPU for extremely fast processing times and being able to run it in the cloud with Google Colab. So if you enjoyed this video, please click on this button right here to subscribe to the channel and make sure you're up to date with all the new content that I post on a weekly basis. And please, if you, loved, if you liked the video, please smash that like button. It helps the channel grow, and it means a lot. Until next time, see ya.